The Absolute Bastard, written by Elizabeth Griffin, narrated by Elizabeth Griffin. Chapter One. We aren't selling, declared Harley Santiago in a cool, determined voice as she slid the cashier's check back across the conference room table. My family has decided to keep the business. The beautiful blonde Latina lifted her tangy brown eyes from the moving piece of paper and encountered those of Murphy Daniels. He was a real estate broker who had approached her father several months ago with a proposition to buy the family-run local supermarket. We had an agreement, he protested. And now you don't, she answered matter-of-factually. No papers were signed. Nothing was finalized. My father changed his mind. That is not how this works, Murphy began to explain. But his words of attack were cut off before he even began to wage war against the neighborhood troublemaker. Do you want more money? Interrupted Colton Carson. His voice was calm, his tone even. Is that it? No, denied Harley as she sought out the face of the stranger. He had been silent during the beginning of the meeting, but now he had found his voice. She wondered how long it would take for him to join in the discussion. Has someone approached you with a better offer? Continued Colton. Tell me. What was the amount? I am willing to renegotiate our price. Harley looked at him skeptically. She examined the blonde-haired young man with a new level of distaste. She took in his bearded, handsome face and decided that she trusted absolutely nothing about him. He was dangerous. He was crafty and he would ruin the neighborhood. Colton Carson was a predator coming into her community and preying on her family and friends. He offered them quick cash and an easy solution to their debts. The entire neighborhood had signs posted on street lamps encouraging them to sell their homes. No repairs necessary. The homeowners didn't need to worry about the condition of the property. All sales were guaranteed. The offer was too good to be ignored, and many elderly couples sold immediately. Checks were cashed, moving trucks quickly lined the streets, while families emptied row house after row house until soul signs decorated the fronts of many vacant homes. Harley tried to contain her outrage, as this arrogant man offered her more money. But her animosity was beginning to spill over and angry words escaped her mouth in a strike of defense. We cannot be bought. My family supermarket is not for sale. We aren't selling at any price, announced Harley with pride. Supermercado de la Gente will remain in the hands of the Santiago family. It is the supermarket of the people. It is the only one of its kind in North Philadelphia. Two generations of Puerto Ricans built it from the ground up. So no, Mr. Carson, we will not accept your offer. Colton considered her face with cool green eyes. He seemed to assess her mood and decided to retreat from his current position of attack. Who was this man, Harley wondered. Why had he chosen to come into her community? Didn't he realize that he was destroying a way of life? Harley quieted her voice but she wouldn't remain idle and watch this stranger attack her world. He had no rights to come into her barrio, her hood, and flaunt his money. He could take his check and burn in hell for all she cared. Her thoughts were harsh, 
But the man had no soul, no conscience. He was encouraging weak businesses to close their doors and turn their backs on the people that they had been serving for years. Many families were living from paycheck to paycheck. A lot were poor and took the money he offered without complaint. To some families, Colton Carson appeared to be a godsend. The first homes to sell were dilapidated and in need of immediate repair, leaking roofs, rotting porches, flooded basements. Then other properties went on the market and were quickly snatched up by Colton Carson and Construction Company. It was difficult to pay mortgages and home repairs at the same time. Car insurances came before rotting porches. Utility bills took precedent over mold treatment. Harley knew that this man and his real estate broker had negotiated 40 businesses out of their properties. The price Carlton had paid out was consistent with the current market value, but the land he was buying would be worth a hell of a lot more in the next five years. If the families in the neighborhood didn't sell their homes to Colton, they either sold their homes to the nearby university, which was stockpiling property for future expansion, or the families sold to other construction companies who in turn gutted and renovated the buildings before placing them back on the market. Of course, the properties were now worth five to ten times more than the original purchase price. My family has decided to keep our supermarket open. We are staying. And then she added earnestly, I hope our decision will change others and cause them to stay. We won't be forced out of our homes because you suddenly realize that this part of Philadelphia is very valuable. Harley delivered the stern reprimand as her eyes collided with Colton's cool green irises. She felt a jilt of excitement. It shot through her like static electricity. One second she felt a zap and then it was gone. The visual impact knocked some of the breath out of her, but she regained her composure and she stood her ground. She ignored any appealing physical trait that made her aware of his good looks. The man might be gorgeous, but he was also ignorant to human decency, and he was arrogant. He was an opportunist. There was no denying that, she thought sadly, but no one was going to force her family to close their doors. Harley had argued this point with her father for weeks. Rubio Santiago had been tempted to take the money and open a supermarket in another part of the city. But that was before his daughter had convinced him to stay. Harley reminded her papito that the Santiago's had been a part of this community for decades. Many had traveled from Puerto Rico to New York and eventually from New York to Philadelphia. They couldn't let that piece of history be bought up and traded in for townhouses, college campuses, and new dorm rooms. Harley loved her papito, who spoke Spanglish, a combination of broken English and Spanish. She admired his attempts to communicate, for she knew that Rubio Santiago could speak his mother tongue with an eloquence, a passion, and a romantic rhythm that would seduce listeners for hours. Thank you for joining me once again at my channel. The Absolute Bastard is on sale wherever ebooks are sold. The audiobook will also be coming soon, but it will not be narrated by me. 
I hope you